And good morning, evening, whatever the time is for you. Welcome to the second Catalyte Qualifier for the World Series of Free Enterprise. My name's Poydrak, I am here with Flory. Our, our restreamer today is Scholar Kitty, the legend herself, and our tracker is Crimson Avex. It's Today we have Catalyte, as I said, a lot more riding on what's going on in this, in inside of the game than the previous qualifiers. Wouldn't you say so, Flory? Absolutely. This one is definitely one of those uh, flag sets that can be so difficult to the point that we actually have a rule that says if the uh, seat is unplayable, this is what we have to do. So the highlights of this one, and we'll go over it as we uh, go further along, is that you're only going to see five characters. So while there may be like 13, 14 different character recruitment locations, we're only going to get five. We see one of them is Rydia. Uh, all those shops only sell cabins. So great if you want to take a hiking trip. Bad if you want to pick up stuff like life potions and cure items. Speaking of items, we're not doing NJ items today. Any of those Japanese items like sirens, not going to be there. And it looks they like are actually. They, they, the J items are on. on They're on. You oh, just won't see. find them in the shop. That's well, right. We, uh, we do have a Rydia start as well as a Palum. And was that the crystal? That sure was the crystal. So <laughs> we got <laughs> one of the items we need to... Uh, beat the seed already. Now they're going to be looking for uh, either the pass or the darkness crystal. However, this being Catalyte, there are no, you know, grinding is going to be a challenge. There's no random encounters. So, one of the cool things about Catalyte is almost as important as getting what you need is getting your party to the levels to finish the game. Yeah. Uh, with, with, the, with a Black Mage start here, um, Paul, uh, Palum, I believe, is going to be most people's focus rather than Rydia, unless we get some really good summons for her, um, because Palum ramps up much quicker. We see Edward is one of the characters at uh, Baron Inn, so we know Edward is one of the five. Oh boy. I was calling for him earlier because we didn't see him in the first qualifier today, so good to see him make an appearance. Now, since we are looking at T3 instead of T4, I believe the only summons we should be getting via Untrapped Chest would be Sylph and Odin. Uh, maybe Asura, if I remember right. Asura is in that pool as well. Uh, bah uh, Bahamut and Leviathan are T4 or level or, uh, summons, so we won't be seeing them unless it's in a trap chest or in replace of a key item spot. Uh, and we also have the Hobbs flag, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the car uh, see the racers head to Mount Hobbs, even if you get like one of the mid tier ones, like uh, I forgot Jin and Indra and Shiva, having an unblockable, you know, decent attack summon at this stage of the game can be a huge help. Yeah, uh, m most people would like to see a Sylph there because in my opinion and a lot of other races when they've got a Rydia in early game Sylph is probably the most powerful summon you can get because not only does it deal damage it heals you and because of a glitch in the actual game it is free after you get 25 five mana yeah anything. that's pretty good and we're not even guaranteed to see a white mage if you watch the first qualifier I believe we did not have any white mages whatsoever so any right. source of healing is a good source of healing Unless you count Tella. That's, uh, that's true. Tella was there. <laughs> and we did have... Uh, uh, oh, Cecil as well, who can heal, but you don't really want to rely on it. Uh, I did see Sid in the bed in... Uh, oh, in Kaipo. Kaipo. So, nice. so, so we do have a little bit of damage, and that was Indra. Yeah. So okay. that, that is our free summon for West Hobbs. And that's a good one. Lightning damage. You know, there's a lot of bosses out there that are weak to lightning. As we mentioned before, it is unreflectable. Um, it'll be the first few fights. It, I believe it is 30 MP to cast. So the first few fights, Radio won't quite have it. But for the next few, it'll be very useful. 
yeah. Uh, no, def uh, definitely a good, uh, good shout on the uh, weaknesses. Uh, for some strange reason, we uh, about about 30, 40 percent of the bosses in in Final Fantasy IV are weak to electric or, or lightning damage. Why that is, we can't really tell you, but that is the case, and we might see a few uses of that Indra spell. Now, it looks like uh, Supremacy is going to give us our first look at the Hobbs character. Let's take a look. We might have... Okay, so we have our five characters all set. Dark Knight, Cecil, Rydia, Palum, Edward, and Sid. There is not a White Mage in sight. No, not at all. So it, finding Sylphanus would be a very big deal at this point. Yeah. Also, offense, the first few fights, unless we happen to come across an early sand ruby for that Sid, is going to be tricky. Uh, Cecil, for all the work he put into Baron mastering that Dark Blade, does not actually put out a lot of damage. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And uh, we may see people... Uh, oh. This is going to be a tough one on, on a lot of our runners today uh, because not many people can deal with having no major source of healing. It's a very difficult concept for people to get around because you've usually got a Porum, you've usually got a Rosa, or you've usually got a Fu somewhere around. In this, we don't have that safety net here. Yeah, and then to further throw away the safety, usually to compensate for that, you'll head into a shop and buy some Cure 2s and Cure 3s, but nope, that's not going to be there either, so healing items are going to be very valuable. Um, I did see that one of our racers picked up an elixir already, so that's going to be neat. We also see a heroin robe inside Antline Cave. That's going to be pretty nice for some early offense. I know we picked up an elven bow in the bottom of Dancian, so if we got a good set of arrows... That first fight's gonna be tricky because level one Radia, unless you get a yeah. dancing dagger, she's not really gonna put out that much damage. But... That heroin robe is going to protect her though in the back row. If, if we get a maybe a blitz ro uh, whip or a flame whip, we might even see a dragon because that is in the T uh, T four or uh, T three bet. Um, but some early source of damage for her with that heroin robe is going to make the early game a lot easier on people. Yeah, a, a, a good part of this type of seed is about resource acquisition, and you'll see our racers will be looting some spots that you probably wouldn't see otherwise, and checking bosses and spots that you might not otherwise check just to get those resources up. For example, we see Nightdew is taking on Asura in the Mist Dragon spot, kind of rude because a sure is gonna say hey i got healing and you don't but it looks like he picked up a mute dagger so eh, they might be able to pull this off plague in the antlion spot that's oh, it shouldn't that's... be a problem because he looks like he's got a, a whip that's uh that looked like a dragon whip uh from the green uh green whip but uh it might be something different and with the heroin robe, Rydia is going to be pretty fast, but I guess the downside to that is look at those numbers count down. Oh, we got it done. Good job, Choco. Yeah. Luckily enough, this, this spot only has 1,000 HP, eh? so four, five, five whippings from Rydia and Plague is done. All right, let's see. We did see Naitu have to take a reset out of the Asura fight, but the pan is in the Antline Cave. Not useful for us now. But it is going to save us a double dip into self cave when we get underground access. Yeah, uh, and some people may check all the other spots before for ball. Oh, now that they've seen that, seeing if they can get that access to the underground and just do for ball in one. Sweep. Oh, the guy for ball is so great. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, I I'm not sure on this particular flag set. You'd love to have that, but I think. If you can get that early experience, you, you go ahead and see what bosses are there. We've already seen some tricky ones, and yeah. pretty uh, getting, you know, enough MP for that summon is going to be nice. Palin getting uh, enough levels to where he can start casting his level 2 elemental spells, and hopefully gets a virus yeah. is, is going to be a big tipping point for when we start to get these early bosses. 
Yeah, in his favour for that, his level two spells do come very early. They're within, uh, I think, four levels of his starter. So we'll be seeing them very quickly. And I believe Virus is at level 23, so just 13 levels away. Uh, yeah, qu I think uh, it's oh, close it to 23. Yeah, and Virus, I, I believe, is around 18, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, he does get some very powerful spells very early. A, uh, so we will see him get a uh, get a lot more use as the game progresses. Well, Invermove manages to get the plague fight down, but Palum did not survive it, so he is not going to get Ice Two, which uh, is unfortunate. Would have probably been he was probably hoping for that because Ant Lion in the hold spot to get. Although Dark, uh, Cecil is a Dark Knight at the moment, and not too useful. He's still a character that can take damage for you, can deal very little damage, but still damage. But again, free right line is much easier with a tier two spell. Yeah, you never know. We might come across a black sword too, and we can start to get some nice little swoon procs on, on bosses that'll allow us. We're probably going to see a pretty good percentage of the bosses today, just because, and it'll help a lot for trap chests too. Um, you're going to see a whole lot more trap chests than you normally would because we can't get random encounters. We've got to get experience somewhere. Yeah. Now, I, now that people know that uh, Dark Knight Cecil Wins is in there, Ordeals is going to be a play at some point. Uh, it was likely going to be on their list anyway, just for ex early game experience. Um, but it's... It's always hesitant as it's a very long winded mountain with three the, uh, bosses and a cutscene. I mean, so some people just ignore it if they don't have Teller or Cecil. Yeah, I, I think at this point the experience can be too valuable. Um, and there's, it, it's a lot tougher to take out bosses that are that much higher level when you're saddled with the handicaps that we've kind of given the racers at this point. We did say Chokosura pick up a Runax in the back of Hobbs, uh, so that will be helpful for the Asura fight if we end up going back to it, but I think more importantly, when we get up to Mount Ordeal, Cecil and or Sid will be able to wield that to great effect. Yes, in indeed. I... The only outlier at this moment in time is Edward. <laughs> yeah, what do we do with Edward? Uh, probably hope to find as a good uh, a smattering of arrows and you know, the spoon flag is not on in Catalyte, so finding the spoon flag, not gonna help out Edward. Yeah, it is it's entirely possible that people may just delay getting Edward as much as possible or if they do get him, Make sure he's face down on in the dirt to for any purposes, which actually doesn't actually help now that I think about it, because we have a Cecil. Yeah, Cecil's going to be the the agility anchor regardless. Uh, AA flag is not on, so that means uh, the, what sets the agility for both the boss and the party members is going to be Cecil. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll actually see whether or not our runners decide to keep Cecil face down to try to give the their party the rest of their party an edge on the Z fight. No, well, they can't. Aren't, I'm afraid he's not in the seat. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay. It is the gauntlet. Well, I guess the good news is this is not the gauntlet at the mill on Z spot because that is ugh. But still, yeah. nobody likes the gauntlet fight. But at this point in the game, given where the characters are, I don't think our runners are too upset to see that. It's a very winnable fight. Yeah, this this spot has almost no physical dam uh, damage output. Um, speed is so-so, oh, but it's the physical damage which is really key in this, this spot. So getting through this is just a matter of time and patience more than effort. Yeah, the, the, the runners will have very little problem with this. We do see Supremacy taking on the mother of all bombs. Um, that, that looks at full ball, I believe. Yeah. Making use of those level 1J items, that's that's good to see. Yeah. 
strangely that the weaker bombs have a lot of magic defense in that spot, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the gray bombs, which are generally the more harder hitting, more HP targets, don't have any. Yeah, I mean, you see a bomb in a Final Fantasy game, your reflex is to cast ice on it. Oh, wait, it didn't work. I think I have three for bullfights almost at the same time, but looks like Supremacy got it done, so let's see what the item is. Rat tail. Uh, not terribly helpful at this point, but any key item is a good key item. Yeah, they do need the the hook to actually turn that rat tail in. And if we do see a hook at this stage, it's more than likely we're having the hook seed. Oh boy! I, I was going to say I'm not entirely certain the runners want to see the hook at this point. Uh, finding the hook and not finding the magma key means that in order to get underground. We have to go through Cave Ablon and Upper Babil and fight the Rubicant spot, which you are meant to do with a party level of, I believe, in the upper 20s, lower 30s. So, yeah. with, this, with this party, um, it's pr I would venture to guess, I haven't run too many Cattle Lights, that that is usually the biggest spot of contention when it comes to whether or not a seed is unbeatable. It generally is. Uh uh, there are a lot of rude, uh, rude bosses that are available in the King Queen Eblen spot as well as the Ruby Conte spot. As, as you said, Ed, you, uh, it's generally a higher level spot than most of the rest of the overworld. So getting through that, if you don't have a high hit point character, is a little tough. They do have yeah. Cecil. Once he's a uh, paladin, does get a lot of hit, hit points very quickly. And Sid is around. But we're not guaranteed with Sid because of he is behind the Sand Ruby. Yeah, and we're not going to get to see Cecil's... Well, there's a chance we could see Cecil's high-tier gear, but that's only going to come from Trap Chest or uh, from a key item spot that is not actually a key item. Um, it does It and does make actually, you wonder... Actually, that's, that's actually not true. Uh, the armor, the crystal armor is actually on the T3 setting. It's right, the, a higher level weapons, which are... Yeah, the higher level people. weapons, that's right. Yeah. Crystal, still, crystal we... armor could be really useful at this point in time, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah, but we have seen a runex, which is a very high, high tier weapon, and which is still under T3, that uh, Cecil can use. So that's going to be very useful for them. Uh, there are a number of others. There's, there's a blizzard sword, which although not amazing, is still serviceable for Cecil. It's the highest you can get outside of T4. Did my eyes deceive me, or did I just watch the Magus sisters fire to themselves? And oh, by the way, b -b 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 bonus round. We've got good old D-Mist as the second fight at Baron Inn. Yeah, it is very possible that you did, um, because that spot, the agility is a little bit wonky. There is always the chance that uh, Mindy, the sister at the front, will get a turn before, or, or Sandy at the back, which will get her, uh, which will cause her to actually fire two onto Cindy, and kill her in that spot. It's, it's a little bit wonky, but it's always, ha it's very possible to happen. Well, supremacy did have to take a while. Uh, that spot does have pretty good physical attack damage and usually when you see a mist fight you're like all right let's just stomach the first couple of rounds and then heal the rest of my party up but we ain't got no healing so uh, that's gonna be a little tricky uh supremacy is gonna give it another shot and this time well, she pulls the delta attack on herself and that's surprisingly good magic too that magic spot is actually surprisingly high the reason for that is that is the baron guard spot their magic is higher than usual because they have status effects. And those status effects from their counters as to either physical or magic attacks are actually needing to be hit. That's why their magic stat is higher, and that's why the magic stat is higher in this spot. We do see CPU as the third ordeal spite. That is a fantastic boss to see in that spot. Very low HP and CPU in those spots with higher locations, ugh, 
That can be yeah. a little bit of a slog, so seeing that at all deals is very nice. Yeah. Rydia for Chokosaur does look like uh, she's one uh, the MVP with that uh, Dragon Whip and Heroin Robe at the moment. Um, I think he's the only one that's got that Dragon Whip. I might be mistaken. I haven't I seen see anyone else using it. I know there's a Flame Whip on the way up to Ordeals, but I don't know if anybody else had picked up a Dragon Whip. Hmm. It's it's funny at this point we you can actually have like two different builds of Rydia. Do you want to good base it around uh, using Indra? Do you want to base it around the Heron Rule? So uh, those two different strategies with the one character is one of the nice things about Rydia, to be honest. Yeah, she is very versatile. She has a lot of m multi uh, applications. At this early stage, it's more likely a physical is the best route. Her physical stats don't, don't increase as much as her magical, so magic is better late game for her, but early game, if she can get this heroin robe and this uh, and a decent weapon for her, either a bow and arrow, power, uh, power staff, one of her better whips, early game she will do work with that physical damage. And having that Talon and Cecil being able to equip those axes can be very useful for the upcoming fight, and you see him actually utilizing that crystal armor, gonna keep Cecil in the back row because of that massive physical attack. Yeah. I think Chokasur is gonna get himself a pretty nice advantage here. Unfortunately, yeah. the Ordeals gave us the tower key, which is used underground, and we don't have yeah. underground access yet. I must say boo, though, um, because getting your Spoony Bard also gives you the Magma Key. Oh, what's so, that? Wow. No hook seed for us. Well, the runners will be very happy to see not only the Magma Key, we'll be able to see if Rydia's mom has got it going on. And she gives us... The Avenger. Well, that's actually not a bad find. That is a very nice find with a, a dark, uh, 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 with a Paladin Cecil in your team. Which Supremacy, I think, still needs to go and get. But uh, this, um, since, since uh, we know that going through D-Mist is required, ev uh, that Avenger is going to be available to everyone. Yep. <laughs> so, it's just a matter of time and see where Supremacy goes next. It looks like he's heading directly underground. Maybe he wanting to turn in that pan, maybe check the places in Feymarsh and see what's going on there. Yeah, so why would why would uh, the runners be excited to see the Avenger sword? Well, there's a few things. One, uh, the first one is it's an excellent weapon and uh, it gives 15 into the physical attacking stats as well, uh, so agility and strength, but it also puts characters in the berserk status, which is basically auto-attacking. And having that going forward is going to be a great deal of help, especially since they don't have a a anyone that can actually do uh, cast that onto anyone. Uh, berserk status, which, not only does it give auto attack, but it also increases the amount of damage that you do anyway. So that is one of the reasons why the Avenger is a nice find in this case. Yep, and Chokasur is going to have that advantage. I believe he does have his power in Cecil. Uh, you see most of our runners use the pan right off the bat. Let's see what the Sylphs have to give us. And I just saw an Indra on Night Do's screen. Thank you, uh, thank you, Night Do. We needed to see it at least once. Thank you very much. <laughs> it seemed Kainazo up on ordeals, while it may be a little difficult in this particular spot given our party, not seeing Kainazo in the later spots is very nice to see. Yeah, very, very much so. His wave does a percentage of his own health in damage to everyone so if you find it in a high hit point spot it can do a whole lot of damage and if you find it in a fast spot in conjunction with that you're in for a lot of hurt very quickly well sadly the difficulty of our C just went down 
by a few notches. It looks like Supremacy that was picked up in Adamant Armor. Uh, that is the best armor in the game. Combine that with the Avenger and Cecil is going to be dealing out his own. He's going to become the new Pain Man. Not in the way that we all are used to, but he's going to be dishing out the pain to the enemies at this point. Yeah. He's... He is, is preferable if we f he he wants, wants to get a good powered Cecil that he finds one of his better weapons still. But um, Avenger uh, uh, Avenger Adam and, and Cecil is nothing to be sneezed at. So Supremacy gave us a look at the summon bosses. It looked like we had Octomom at Leviathan, which is kind of rude because Octomom starts off pretty fast, and that Leviathan physical damage is. I believe tied for the highest in the game. We did see one of the guards as the Asura spot, so if they happen to come across... I, I, I see uh, Supremacy has an hourglass in his inventory. If he happens to come across something like maybe utilizing that Odin that would allow him to seize the bosses, we might... Yeah, there we go. We yeah, might see him give it a shot right now. Yeah, uh, it is still dependent on if Rydia survives the first initial barrage of attacks by the guards um, because she is still fairly low health but she's probably got that heroin robe which will help out a lot there yeah that is her spot is one of the faster spots in the game so it looks like yeah he's gonna so he's it, gonna decide to put the adamant on her right now to nullify the physical attack so Rydia should survive this yeah. Uh, Adam and Armor is going to increase the hit percentage, I believe, of, uh, of Odin, and having her in the middle is going to give that a boost as yeah. well. So it looks like the green-haired Scala is going to take out uh, whatever guards we happen to have here. Yeah. Uh, Odin, uh, o Odin's death attack, Zantek Sukun, or Odin as it's called in this game, is still Ill linked to Rydia's magic stat for if it hits or not. So... There's a, quite a good possibility at this stage that it's going to work, but there's always the case that it won't. <laughs> but I, he, he may not even need to use the hourglass at this point. Riddy is not taking, not going to be taking any damage. Palom and Edward, well, Palom, oh, as you say, he pulled off a really clutch dodge at first, but yeah. Odin um, should. Oh no, no. Odin fluffs. I think that's more due to the fact that she is at this um, it looks like she's only level three four so that um, it, I do believe it takes level into account as well so that's probably more the danger that that's happened here rather than having enough magic stat. Well, Supremacy did have a pretty good backup strat, and that was having a coffin. And with this fight, if you happen to take out the officer, the soldiers, without his stellar leading ship's leadership, will not know what to do and start attacking each other. And as you can see, they are doing more damage to each other than Rydia could possibly. He might have actually slowed down the fight a little bit by paralyzing them. Yeah. Uh, they also attack themselves, because... I can, and why... <laughs> they don't know, like you said, they don't know what they're doing. Apparently, their own target is themselves. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, if you've spent some time serving under Golbez, I would imagine his army's morale is not the highest uh, thing around yeah. this point in time. But he did, he did pull it off. Yep, yeah, and he got, uh, he got given the spoon. So Spoonwood is not online because it's not available. <laughs> but getting key items. I mean, but considering we have the crystal, um, getting to 10 key items is going to be a benchmark for all of our racers. Getting 10 key items will double the experience, and, you know, when we're checking out trap chests for the grind, being able to cut that in half is a huge deal. And we, oh, yeah. He's at one, three, four, it, five, six already. Yeah, definitely in this set, because Rydia... Although, no, oh, she does get up to the nuke, nuke level spells. Um, in under the current flag set of J I S A, the important one there is the J S. So it's Japanese spells. 
she doesn't learn nuke until level 55 whereas she, if that flag wasn't available it'd be level 50 so yeah there's a very big difference there especially the way her xp curve translates that yeah she has i think like the worst xp curve in the game and we get a white spear which does, oh but sheila too breaks out the crystal sword so we have an adamant we have a crystal sword and we have an Avenger. That is probably the best outcome you can get for a Cecil. Because the Adam, uh, the Avenger, although on its own is good, it has a little quirk to it, doesn't it, Flory? Yeah, so when you switch the... Uh, when you have a, a weapon equipped and then you switch to the Avenger sword, Cecil will still be Berserk, or Kane if you happen to have him, but we don't. But he will retain the attack power of the previous weapon. So switching from a crystal sword to the Avenger gives you crystal sword power with the added flavor of Berserk, which turns him into a wrecking machine. So well, there's not a lot of bosses left that are really going to pose that much of a problem. On on the overworld and the underworld, no. Um... It's not really until we get to the moon where things are actually going to pick up in that sort of regard. And people will be going to the moon because there's no real grinding opportunities on the, the, on, um, on the Earth. They're going to need to go to the moon to get them levels. Yeah, the bosses aren't going to... The only two... Uh, the DC get okay experience from the Golbez fights. And the top tower boss, uh, they give about, I want to say, 25k base. And Soap Cave is okay, but the moon bosses give way more than that. So if you can pull that off, as soon as we get a darkness crystal, we might see everybody take a trip to the moon. Yeah, the only other place on the Earth that is relatively good for experience, if you've got tanky items, is Sylph Cave. But without the source of float to get over the trap, uh, trap tiles in there, you really don't want to be grinding in there. Yeah, the that's going to be rough. <laughs> we have no healers anyway. So those, uh, those tiles will pretty much take care of the party themselves. Supremacy had not gotten a Cecil as if getting an Avenger and a Crystal Sword. It changed his mind a little bit and we see him take the trip up to Ordeals. Yeah, he does know that Cecil is in the seed. He, he has been to Hobbs. Uh, 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 so he's probably going to go up ordeals, get that, and then go and get Cecil. If he hasn't picked him up already. Well, it looks like our runners are kind of circling around to spots we've seen. Night Dew is uh, finishing up Fey March, uh, and then checking out uh, what Rydia's mom has. Very happy to see the Avenger, and then loot the rest of Mist Village. And Chokasura is probably He's doing what we talked about the triple the one one stop for bull trip yeah cuts down a whole lot of time because you don't have to keep going in and out of one place going in once for everything is much more preferable yeah and it's a castle we can't use exit in so that's it's very nice convenience uh bad prof to show Kusura for being able to pull that off child get in the way no and so now he's he is armed for bear and ready to as soon as he gets sheila too he is going to be elated to find this crystal sword yeah we did have a star veil in there as well in the left tower that could come into play as well yeah uh, we still haven't seen wyvern we still haven't and uh, seen bahamut both of of those you can make good use of of a star veil there's also gold bears out there which is also a good to um, use of a star veil there's a few others, but they're the most prominent three, I would say. I do wonder if we start to see a point where our runners will start to be thinking of the late game. I think the only few bosses that are really going to be super rude are ones where we have to worry about being able to manipulate agility. So if that means you're going to start looting a little more... Then they'd have to hoping to find a cursed ring or a dwarf axe or something that's gonna be able to lower the agility if they need it i wouldn't be surprised if some of them uh, some of the runners have been thinking about it from the get-go because they've got the crystal now all they need is this uh, is the darkness crystal 
people, really, and they are ready to just go and get themselves ready on the level. We're actually running out of spots to check. I would imagine a trip to the tower to the tower is pro to tower or dwarf. One of those two is probably going to happen pretty soon. Chokasu is going to check out the Tamra armory. You're going to get to see the profession of the dwarf. Please show us. Aww. <laughs> He, he, he wanted to show us, but uh, bumped into him, but then decided not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, although there's not too many, uh, any spots available, none of them you would really like. Um, tower, uh, tower takes a while to get through, especially for both checks. Uh, there's Luca uh, uh, Cave, the sealed cave, which no one really wants to go through, ever, because you have to get through to the end and then fight a fairly quick boss. Um, the there's the spot in and the the Leviathan and spot in Feymarsh, which can be difficult, especially with the boss we've got there. Yeah, that that particular boss is going to deal some damage. There's, I I personally tend to take the option of when there's no good options left, that's when you hit up Dwarf Castle. <laughs> yeah, uh, more, like gifts, <laughs> more gifts for Cecil, by the way. A Zeus gauntlet in the, uh, the basement of the dwarf of area. Oh, he's, like already got, he's actually already got one. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> so Chukasura is going to act... Yeah, going to demonstrate one of the glitches we can make use of, and that is the back row glitch. If you happen to equip something that gives your uh, characters equal damage from the back row, both on, on uh, your party's end and the enemy's end, sets, it sets a flag to there. That flag doesn't actually go away, so if you go and switch back to the sword, you'll still have all the benefits of being equipping a back row weapon without actually equipping a back row weapon. When you combine that with the crystal armor, which while has immunity to berserk, is not affected by the Avenger sword being auto berserk, Cecil in the back row is not going to take any physical damage whatsoever. Yeah, and with, with the adamant on one of the other uh, characters, that means two people won't really be susceptible to physical damage. Uh, sets up, up quite nicely for uh, just getting through these bosses very quickly. Yeah, about the only thing I think that could pose a well never mind eight, eight <laughs> no, I was like oh maybe he gets hit by a wig no um, <laughs> yeah. when you see a those sorts of damages from and this our Cecil here is I'd say level 18 to 20 right now uh, you just can't help but smile <laughs> I mean Rydia with a heroin robe and, and dragon whip is already pulling out 2.8k damage and Cecil is just like, check this out. <laughs> yeah, that was against the dragon form of Dark Elf who is, is susceptible to that. And that must be the water hag. Thank you, Couch, for the subscription via Trips Prime. Appreciate it. Uh, we do see the second boss is the true king of the seas, the water hag. So, <laughs> with a free one, with a uh, Three bosses are still active, so all we gotta do is thwack in three times, and we're good to go. Although Palum missed, so that's a bummer. Yeah, but Palum's never really been known for his, his physical aptitude, no. unlike Rydia right now. <laughs> I, I've always liked how people will say, yes, Palum is the better Black Mage. Technically, yes. But he doesn't have quite the utility that Rydia does in other areas. Yeah, but it, when it's it's very easy to look at a character and kind of just say, how good are they in the Z fight? And use that as your barometer as to whether or not you think the character is super good. And sure, Palum is much more useful in the Z fight, but Rydia has that utility in other areas. If she has to go physical, she can. She has AoE unblockable damage. She can turn bosses into a ghost hand that is stealing our darkness crystal in the crystal room. <laughs> and now let's see what King yeah. Shot decides to give us. Yeah, I, 
I also don't think it's white on white robe. Yeah, that's great for the white mage we don't have. Um, also, um, the thing about uh, when he gets to the Z fight for Rydia versus Palum, usually it's a moot point. If they're both going to have nuke, they're both going to have very high high magic stat. I, w I actually think, think Rydia's got a little bit better on that because she has access to a tiara at most cases. Um, but it really, it's just uh, they're both fairly even at that point. It's where do they go from that? Palum has the advantage in early game spells. Riddy has the utility advantage. Yeah, it's it, you, you could make the argument that if your if your team is powerful enough and you're pushing face switches in the Z fight, that it's not going to matter. I I personally think the damage from Palum is a little better for reflex strats, but it looks like we're going to see Knight do head into Evlon Castle. He's going to try to get some extra levels from those uh, ogre fights and whatnot. Maybe pick up an extra high tier item. We got a second heron robe. That's nice. Uh, Dwarf yeah. Castle gave us the white robe, which oddly enough, Kid Rydia can equip. Not at <laughs> that point. Kid Rydia turns into adult Rydia <laughs> after the first uh, dwarf fight. So that white robe, I know you could wear it when we came into this fight, but not anymore. Yeah, the only only person in this team that can wear it, and you don't want them wearing it, is Cecil. Yeah, so it's it's actually not that bad for him to wear it, I think. But uh, versus an adamant armor and all the other toys we've got for him, that's not going to be a big deal. And it looked like the the other quote-unquote king of the seas leviathan is our boss fight at the top of tower chokasur is going to knock out both tower boss fights right here yeah, should not be that much of a problem no not with two uh not with a source of lit two on palum cecil just whacking away and Rydia having quite a good attack hacking stat right now as well uh, supremacy is down in in the luca cave the sealed cave going to show us the key item there so, so I, I, yeah this is a good a good idea from uh supremacy because not every spot is going to have a key item so if this happens to have something he doesn't need he can just reset and go out if it happens to be something that's a transitional item like the twin harp ah, oh a star destroyer he might actually keep it no oh, psych it, it it's more likely no it's a very nice item the best s uh, Black Mage Age Rod in the game, but they've already they've seen the mist. There's no guarantee on getting out of that with that item. Yeah, it's it's one of those quality of life versus time arguments. Uh, it would definitely make their life a little easier as far as our Black Magic goes, but it's an extra boss fight, and then it's casting warp six times to get out of there. That's an extra three or four minutes, and at this point, I think Supremacy making the correct call, saying let's all head to the tower. Yeah. And oh, um, Inven is facing up against that Ultraman, and Edward happened to get hit for almost four thousand damage. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, those uh, landfaring octopi tend to do quite a bit of damage to. Or it doesn't look like Invent has our full Cecil start starter back though, so this is yeah. going to take them a little longer than the rest of our racers when they decide to go when and if they decide to hit that up. Yeah, but this uh, this is a spot that hasn't been checked by anyone, so if it happens to be something good, um, he's in a very good spot. Uh, and with uh, Palum in the back row uh, with that at at Adamant Armor equipped and the uh, viruses coming out. This fight is, like a lot of things we've had, just a matter of time rather than effort. Yeah, and it's, what's what's nice about the Octomon fight as well, the first few spots are difficult because he's kind of quick. As he starts to do damage, you see the tentacles start to go away, and as they start to go away, Octomon gets slower and slower. I think the only concern he's going to have now is whether Palum has enough MP to actually do all the damage before he runs out. I think that's why you saw Inven break out a couple of bluffs to make the magic power of his quacks a little stronger. Yeah. 
Uh, bluff increases the, uh, the magic power of Palum, I believe, by... I think it's between 8 and 15. I don't think there's a set number, but I'm not too certain. Uh... ...scene decided to start using Lit 2. Um... We did see the second tower fight for Chokosura was the was Dr. Luge. That's not that it's a boss you'd probably rather see in a later spot, but for here it's okay because it means they our characters are fast enough that we don't have to worry about having the hippest dance move in the underground, the poison step being executed for a good 15 minutes and watching the screen blur and start to yell at us while we're walking around with poison on our characters. Yeah. And the item? Darkness Crystal. So tower is required. Dr. Luge is guarding our Darkness Crystal. So... Do you think he's going to go straight to the moon? I... Really, um, just looking at him, yes, but I would see no reason why not. I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine key items I count. So once he's got that at last one, and and he's just going to go and probably do a bit of uh, grinding and going, really. Yeah, he is actually in go mode at this point. He does have. He knows he has a free boss at his disposal in the Octomom, but there's a very good chance he's going to come across a moon boss that is physical attack only as well. So on the moon, and if that happens, all the better, especially if he decides to hit the D Lunar spot at first. I believe that's like 100k. So I mean, that would be quite a bit of experience. And really, at this point, what we're looking at is how many levels can we get our characters and how fast can we get there yeah Optiman, which you vendable did actually get through gave the baron key so more fetch quest for him and so probably leading him a bit further away than he would like yeah let's see if he actually decides to commit to this chain and go to the, directly to baron or if he decides to go the efficiency route and get two for one at the tower The one thing I do see that uh, could be detrimental to the team, uh, the team compositions right now is that lack of Sid. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, if we come across in the course of our uh, lunar excavation, if we come across a sand ruby, do you think our runners decide to go back and pick up Sid as, just to have the fifth character? It would... It's difficult for them, uh, for me to say uh, because it's all based on pr uh, player preference. Going into the Z fight, having five characters is always preferable. But there are a lot of people who have been working with four, sometimes three characters in the Z fight. So if they feel comfortable, they might just go in with the four. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, Edward's main utility in the Z fight is going to be hiding and if he have to go to red alert and things start to turn south he's going to be able to show up and hopefully deliver some kind of curative item that we picked up maybe utilize one of the elixirs we found but other than that I, I do wonder if we see just to have another functional character if you decide to pick up the trip another nice thing about going to the moon is that if Chokosura picks up a 10th key item, he will be able to cash out those sirens for a double drag era, the double King Ryu fight for about 180k or 150k. It's 120. 120, it's 120 yeah. Yeah, 180 would be if the light first one. Unfortunately, it's not the case in this, so we aren't able to get those extra experience points. That's right, I'm so used to the life glitch. <laughs> I was like, what's the map? 180? No, 50? No, 20? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, now Chokosaur has found Peldim at the Bahamut spot. Uh, it's a physical orientated boss, and with the adamant armor, it's going to be fairly simple to get through. But he's down to Palum, so this is going to be, again, slow. Yeah, he's uh, 
one of the other runners who decided to not put the adamant on Cecil and instead decided to put it on Pelham. So we'll see. This this might take a little while, but as long as we have enough MP to do the damage required, it'll get done, but it will give some of our runners who are not quite on the moon yet a chance to catch up as we see Supremacy preparing his big whale for takeoff. Yeah. Supremacy is going up with only eight key items um, instead of the nine that Chokasaur has, so it's a little bit further behind in terms of readiness it's to get those levels uh but uh, going to the moon and it's she he he's really just hoping get those two quick egg key items get myself going I, I fully expect supremacy to go down to the bottom rather than uh, and chocosaurus as going to bahamut because there's more option uh, more chances for or the key items at the bottom of the lunar subterrain yeah, I think he was going this one-offing on Bahamut. We do see Invenerable does find Valvalis, but it is at the spot where it is pretty doable with Cecil in the middle and Avengers. Not going to be that much of a problem. Yeah. So we will get a, may have an advantage here if Sid happens to be the character that the rest of our racers want to have. But we haven't checked the Moon character yet, and Supremacy is checking out that first too. Oh. And Ogopogo is the true king of Baron today. So yeah. somehow a, a lunar sea snake has infiltrated a urban kingdom. I mean, he just he looks just like the king. How can, it's it's very difficult to tell them apart. <laughs> so that's another boss that you're kind of happy to see here, as opposed to a spot where his physical attack. Or, you know, just basically would make your life more difficult because of his speed. Um, yeah. And then making short work of him. Yeah. yeah Ogopogo oh, starts off the fight every time. I'm with two waves which deal 50% of your, uh, your character's max HP as damage. It will then hit a few times, uh, three times, and then do a single wave. And then after that, hit two times, and then do another double wave. In a fast spot, and a very hard hitting spot that is extremely dangerous so neither of our characters were sid but chokosura did pick up the legend sword which is fantastic for him because that gives him 10 key items now he's going to be getting double experience on all the rest of his fights he's got a very good advantage over the rest of the field right now yeah and supremacy looks like he's taking on some trap chests as Probably looking and to get some experience that way. Yeah, should not be too much of a problem with the adamant armor. We might see him try to utilize Odin on some of these fights, but a Cecil with the Avenger and all of his other goodies should not make this that much of a big deal. Invent does get the pink tail. Now we haven't seen the hook, and there's a good chance we may not see it up until the moon, because I think we've check just about everything else available on the overworld but if he decides to go back and we do find the hook on the moon he may well he'll have the option of getting a second admin armor if he wants it yeah uh, um just a quick note going back to uh applications of ridia um a lot of the enemies in trap chests up on the moon and and a lot of the enemies you'd fight to grind are dragons. She has a dragon whip, and in Supremacy's case, uh, 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 and we do have an adamant on there somewhere. Uh, uh, that is a very good combination for just doing that grind. Yeah, it's four times damage to dragon it. Dragon enemies that have that weakness is going to be pretty useful if he decides to come across any King Ryu's or Ging Ryu's or other Ryu's. Uh, defense sword, nah, it's, it's, it's a good sword, but we have the best weapon for Cecil. So weapons, unless, like, another Stardust Rod would be nice, but we're pretty set as far as weapons and weapons go. Armor, you know, we wouldn't mind to see some magic boosting gear. Uh, but other than that, I think equipment-wise, our runners are pretty much set. Yeah. 
Uh, I think the only thing that other people are really hoping for right now uh, is a silver. Yeah, that that would absolutely be a nice find. Uh, we'll see. You never know. It, it is it is in that pool. Uh, Children's yeah, yeah. does decide to take out the industrial strength hair dryers. We can't live without them. Uh, they give us plenty of experience. He's got 10 key items. So now, after knocking that out, it's gonna. Let's see if he decides to go top down, take on the chest, or if he decides to take on the boss. My gut says he's gonna check that D Lunar spot. So if it's something that's doable, that's 200k. Yeah. And Odin spot gives us the life staff. So. Not really something that anyone can use. Yeah, Str nobody can equip it. Strangely enough, Cecil, although he can use a lot of white mage gear, cannot actually use the life staff. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. He does come with the silver staff equipped, but the life staff is a little too complex. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Simple points out in chat. Kid Rydia can equip all the staves and rods, but uh, post-transformation she cannot. So Invan is going to go and take tackle the Dwarf Castle here. Uh, Supremacy is heading toward the Wyvern spot, so we'll get a boss we haven't seen yet. This one's a little bit out of the way, so... I, going through the moon is another thing of personal preference. I like going down to the bottom doing the D-Lunar spot first and go, then Plague spot and then Ultima, uh, Ulta, um, Pogo Pogo spot and oh, then going sure. up yes. from there. Yeah, but there are some people that like going from the Pale Dim spot downwards. Yeah, I think it has to do with not wanting to get the super high XP spots out of the way until he, if he can pull off 10 key items. But we do see Pain Man in the Wyvern spot, and <laughs> true to his name, dispensing pain all throughout the land and our party, doing about 1k a pop. I believe that scales off of his attack power, and Bahamut's attack power is top notch. Uh, it's the Wyvern spot, but it's still or very Wyvern, similar. Uh, apparently, Cecil in both his his forms that we get, uh, or the uh, the runners get today. And the enemy form both want to joust for being the true pain man today. <laughs> well, Dark Pain Man <laughs> may have won this fight. Uh, mm. I doubt we're going to see him ever return to that spot, lacking healing. Um, even if I could, you'd probably want to save those items. We'll get another gem at the dealer spot, Colpez. This is a very rude moon. Now, for ha having adamant armors is going to make this a little easier. Um, you're going to be immune to that hold gas. Funny when Wyvern has it, by the way, in W2. Um, he's going to be immune to uh, Shadow's Feeding Frenzy. And Wol uh, Wolbez. Golbez's spell kit insist consists of Lit 3 and Fire 2 which would be one damage to Adam and Armor, but the virus may still hurt. It will. Um, it, I don't think it will hurt that much in this particular spot because D the D-Lunars, although they do have a virus counter script, they're, it's actually very weak because the majority of their other damage is based off physical damage and percentage based. Well, having the having the adamant armor did give him time to use one of the star bells he found across his journeys, and oh my goodness, that damage! Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. gonna fell him in about two or three swipes. He may not even get to. Yeah, Go uh, um, Golbez has a few weaknesses. One of them being holy, and the crystal oh, sword is a very very holy sword. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, the most holiest of swords. Yeah, he's also weak to fire, so if you've got a, a, a yarn with a fire claw available, that is also a very good way to beat down the, um, hit, the hit points. But just get that set with a holy sword, you can usually get through it very quickly. <laughs> so he does get that truckload of experience. Also happens to find two more key items. So sadly, we will not be seeing music to this seed. 
Um, but the 10 key items is music to Supremacy's ears, and he's going to be getting double experience, same as Trokosura. Trokosura finds the pain man and nopes right on out. I don't blame him there. Yeah. One of the bad things about uh, now, uh, and the Gobez as fight, um, and a few other fights that are actually in this game, um, they're split fights. Gobez is one of them right. because, because the Dark Dragon is a part of that fight. The way experience works uh, is that they are and the experience is split between all entities in that fight. Golbez is is um, is is good for 75 percent of that experience the dark dragon 25 the dark dragon never dies so that and that experience does not, not get given to you so you do lose out on experience and experience is what they want in this yeah that's scene. the only thing we need right now so that's in lead choker to take out some trap chests we find good old bimmy and jimmy uh, the two dragons on the left side. This can be a particularly brutal fight, but with the dragon whips and the iron armor as well, poor Edward goes down at a slight breeze. Uh, the rest of our party should be able to handle this without much of Yeah. Uh, so with 10 key items, this spot is... This particular fight should give them, I want to say, six digits of experience. Yeah, I would believe it's 130,000. I can't say for certain if that's the case, but uh, we'll see right when we get to the end of it. Did you see rare use of a late game vampire? Uh, you know, any healing you can find, let's make use of. That's that's pretty good uh, problem solving there on Trovasura's part. Red Dragon down, so that's the more difficult one. Yeah. And by the looks of that blizzard, uh, this uh, this one's all just about to die, yeah. Uh, because blizzard is a percentage-based uh, attack, and that was 170,000 experience, I believe it was. Uh, Ooh, it it did go past, past by very quickly, but uh, yeah, that is always helpful. But Rydia was doing almost as much as the Crystal Sword Cestor in, in that fight against the Red Dragon, and when you look at that in, in the vacuum and you go, Okay. <laughs> so Naitu picked up the sand ruby it looked like from the Rubikin fight and answers one of our questions earlier, does he do we go back and get the extra character? He absolutely does. Uh got the rune axe, which is the best weapon for Sid that he can wear. So Sid will be able to contribute uh relatively quickly. I do wonder what is going through our runners' heads as far as how they want to approach the Z fight. Because no white mage, Edward's going to be hiding in the shadows. No there. healing that we know of other than I think one elixir that we might have picked up. How There's do you think one cure free um, with great difficulty. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> with great difficulty. Uh, the one saving grace that they've got is they do have a lot of damage output. Um, between two black mages, if they do reflect nuke and crystal sword or avenger Cecil, there is the possibility that no healing would be required in Z fight. Yeah, so if damage to go about forty k, I think. That would push him into a phase switch, and if you can time that in such a way that it interrupts when he would normally cast Big Bang, he might be able to get away with a one Big Bang fight. That <laughs> the the levels you might have to get in order to do something like that. Uh, we'll see how far our runners decide to take it. Um, I would be surprised if they did not at least get one of them to nuke. Yeah, I, I would say hey, that is the best option that they've got to them right now. Uh, getting Nridia up to level 55, getting Parlam up to level 55, getting Cecil onto a agility score of 42 would probably be better than and the 28 available at this moment in time. And then going from that point for, uh, into the Z fight. Yeah, again, fight, or go ahead. Do you want to explain why 20, uh, why twenty eight and forty two are the numbers we tend to look for in the Zeromus fight? 
Yeah, I, I've been looking into it a little bit more over the past week. Uh, didn't help me too much yesterday, but um, <laughs> uh, in terms of agility, Zeromus has 69 agility. Okay. To get Zeromus to... Now, there's something called a, a relative agility in this, which is basically having people at set, um, uh, set agility ticks. So one, uh, the time you need to fill one of uh, your ATB bar is based on ticks in the game. I mean, uh, uh, relative agility does that. Relative agility one means one game tick is needed to fill the bar. Relative agility five, five game ticks. Your agility anchor is, in this case Cecil, is always at five. So you need to have have some something like that to get uh, get everyone else to a uh, good relative agility. One being the best, as far as I'm aware. To get that, to get that at relative agility of one, tw uh, it's either you have someone at relative uh, at agility zero, one, or twenty-eight. Right, those are the three best options after that the, the next next options are uh, 42 for relative agility 2 and if you want to go further than that it's uh, it's another 14 in going uh, going up from that so it goes up in 14 uh, 14s basically yeah yeah relative <laughs> studying relative agility is wizardry in and of itself um, it's it's also a very fickle mistress, as I found out yesterday. <laughs> yeah. um, having, uh, I had someone uh, uh, in the center at Agility 9, which I thought wasn't too bad, uh, because it's fairly slow, and everyone else in my team was fairly high at something, something like 28. Uh, however, Zeromus got a, uh, um, was able to do a shake, which is the move that prepares his Big Bang, and Big Bang in the course of a zero oh, oh time I'm scale cure four, which I didn't think was possible, um, and killed me outright. Yeah, yeah this, it's weird how sometimes you think this stuff, it, you'll also see that sometimes with uh, my favorite combo platter where Zeromus decides to hit you with the Big Bang and you cue, cue a cure four and he throws rocks at you anyway. It's like, no. No, that zero cast time, that, that's all good. Uh, is Supremacy, it looks like he might be trying the Z fight right now. So we may get some of our answers as to how the runners are going to approach this fight. Uh, he's sitting at, it looks like, 48, so that should put... If Cecil does not have the Adamant, I believe that will put him around 30 or 31, which is okay. Um, but more importantly than all of that, we are going to find out the answer to the most important question in Free Enterprise, and that is, whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Yeah, the Z, uh, Z fight here, Zeromus, is not your typical Zeromus fight. Nothing functionality-wise has changed, except one thing, and that is, Scarlet Kitty has given us almost 400 different sprites that when you use a crystal Zeromus will turn into oh, the, one of these which one it is we're just about to find out let's get a good look testament in this Okay, that is, I believe, Guilty Gear uh, breaking out some fighting game characters. I like it. <laughs> now you're talking my game. All right, so let's uh, let's take a let's let's see how Supremacy is going to handle this fight. Um, yeah. Straight up, up bringing out uh, bringing out the Crystal Sword Avenger glitch to do six thousand damage, um, but that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like this testament is going to break out the astral finish on his supremacy party. This, this, uh, this may be a pretty quick fight. Yeah, this 
he's, he's done um, almost, almost 20, uh, uh, 28,000, but two full power Big Bangs will take down an Adamant Armor, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> unless, oh, their name, uh, unless their name is Sid or Young and they've got four, uh, 6,000 uh, hit points. <laughs> oh. Well, they, he has, his party has been summarily destroyed, as Temory puts it in chat. And gonna have to get some more uh, some more levels, I think, to take that on. Uh, we did see Knight do attempt to cash in his Siren on the Double King Ryu fight. Uh, Inven is looking to tackle Bimmy and Jimmy in the upper right. Uh, Shokasura is going farther down in the lunar core. Looks like he's grabbing any chest there. Slumber Sword, not going to put anyone to sleep lately. And I think he's going to head back up and we're going to keep on keeping on with the trap chest. Uh, this Z fight is going to be something else. Uh, it is. It is. And. I know there's this, this this big thing about Scarlet Kitty Classic, it, <laughs> and it didn't look like it at the start, with, with the with the items that have been given out, with the crystal or when the darkness crystal being readily available, you could say. It's at this point where her true evil thoughts come into play. <laughs> you never know where it's gonna get you. And sure enough, it gets you in the end in this case. Uh, this is Zerma's fight. I have healing items. Man, I, I think we saw Invenerable used in Elixir on one of his Fey March boss fights. And he's really going to want to have that one back for this. Uh, this this is going to be tricky. Uh, we're going to see probably our runners get as much experience as they can. Um... Uh, and then how you're going to manage that Cecil experience, because um, if you decide to go full Cecil damage and you throw the Adamant Armor on him, Adamant Armor is plus 15, I believe, agility, and that's going to make him super fast. And while that could be great for how fast Zeramus is in regards to how fast he is versus Cecil, that means the rest of our party members are going to be going very slowly. So, I do wonder, it was pointed out in chat, what may end up saving the day here would be a Drain Sword. If we're going Drain Sword strats on this, we are in for a very long time. Yes! <laughs> um, you know, pack your bags, we're going we're gonna to be gone for a while. But it is it is a, a win condition at that point that a Drain Sword with the Avenger Sword will do enough damage to offset the Big Bangs. It's just gonna... She's gonna have to knock out uh, 100k worth of damage uh, on that Drain Sword. But it is, it is a win condition, and we don't have many of those right now. Yeah. The other option I see a people might be thinking about is just opening cha chest after chest after chest looking for that Asura summon. There is likely going to be one somewhere in the world if you want to open all 399 chests just to find that one thing <laughs> go ahead <laughs> well, we, like, we do see like there are some pretty dense treasure chest locations that are not on the moon and if our runners are feeling comfortable enough with their levels, you may see, like, in Supremacy's case, he has the Earth Crystal. He can go get tw check 24 chests right now, if he <laughs> wants it. So, I, I, I do wonder if that's going to lead any of our runners to decide to make a trip back to Earth, and uh, you know, maybe hope to find that Asura summon that, that some kind of healing. Uh, Chokasura finds Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, uh, the Double Red Dragon fight. This should not be that much of an issue as far as whether or not his party survives it, but it will give him another cool 180k experience or so. One advantage I see Chokasura having over Supremacy just in terms of things is that Palum just used Nuke, which means he's at least 52. 
Yeah. Okay. So Rydia is likely level 50 or so, or cl uh, close to that. So a few more levels with Rydia, having Nuke on her, he might, I just think that's enough, I'm going to try this. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the first the first tipping point as whether or not you see some some runners attempt the Z fight is going to be once you have two new casters and is it Rydia at seventeen fifty yeah, fifty two, so she's about three levels away. Um he might have actually finished all the treasure chests though at this point in time. Um there may not be that many do we see a trip to the Sylph Cave? It's very possible. Uh, we do have Cecil who does have, have curing spells in Cure 2. It's not great, but it, it, can, <laughs> and keep, uh, it can keep you alive between the trap chests. Yeah, throw a white robe on him. That's, you know, I, that does raise the issue. We have... The white robe will boost... Uh, unfortunately, Cecil cannot use that, uh, that life staff. But we can boost his white magic with the white robe. Do you attempt with two nuke casters full reflect and turn Cecil into a full time healer with Cure 2? I wouldn't it, want to put money on it at all. It's tricky, but I, I've, I've heard legends of the Cure 2 healing carry uh, Paladin Cecil. I wonder if oh, the carrot. I wonder if uh, we might actually get to see someone attempt that. I'd be super excited for it. Yeah, the only way I see that working is the crystal sword, which they have, uh, crystal shield, crystal gauntlet, crystal helm, and that white rope. That might put you up to enough uh, uh, will to make it viable, but. Uh, and give enough, enough defense against uh, big bangs, but I don't see. Well, there's a crystal shield. There's a crystal shield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just—it's another one of those options you don't want to explore. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone we've given out today, a uh, that is a possibility. No one wants to explore. No one wants to do uh, uh, the uh, uh, drain sword avenger. Because it takes so long. No one wants to go through Sylph Cave. No one wants to do these Healer Cecil. Oh. <laughs> uh. Well, I did see a Drain Sword in Supremacy's inventory, so that option is there for him if he chooses to take it. Uh. <laughs> Invincible has found the hook, so he does have a second adamant on the table. I I look, I think he might actually go. Yeah, he's he's warping back. Uh, yeah, and he may have been the last one in to the moon, but he's gone through this quite quickly and got the levels fairly well. So we may see him sort of cut his losses and and just go for this at this moment. Crystal ring is nice to find. Uh, that's going to boost the speed of any character you want and since Cecil is likely going to be at a pretty high agility no matter what anything that's going to boost the agility of the supplementary characters is going to be pretty nice uh, Night Dew showing a good example of what Odin can do uh, finishing out that, that boss fight and he's now attempting to be the dragon slayer uh, looks like Inven finds the man of pain now yeah, he, I think should, this is he should get through this though yeah, this is his second time he knew it was here. Um, Cecil can survive this with almost 3,000 hit points, and that Cure 2 actually was quite potent. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I just noticed that was a 1,050 Cure 2. If he, start, if he starts to pull around 1,300 or so, like... I, it was single target, though. Yeah, I, I would imagine all the heals would have to be single <laughs> target if you're going to do that. Uh, spare that even across three characters only be 300 a pop that's that's not really standing up to big bang but and is our first person and he gets a light sword apparently the dark knight version of cecil really really wanted to be a paladin but just wasn't <laughs> cut out for it he, so he, he came to wanted the moon, to use the sword but he couldn't came to the moon defeated wyvern took over his spot and 
it's just us longingly looking at, at that sword in, at, sword in the mirror in the mirrors around him. Wow, uh, somewhere out there, Ravis can uh, sympathize with that. Uh, so we're. Now, Inven is leaving the moon, it looks like. Is he gonna? No, he's just gonna go top down. Alright. However, Supremacy is having another go at it. Okay, so I I do wonder if he's gonna. If we're gonna break out our resident sleepers and uh, decide to go with the Drain Spear. Uh, drain Spear. <laughs> drain Swords uh, strats here. Well, if he does find a way to do the drain, sits, drain spear strats, I will want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Found a way to equip spears! Alright, uh, so let's, let's see how he decides to pull this off. Uh, you usually will see in a standard Z fight, because uh, the first Big Bang timing is not required to nerf it, you will see some kind of attack that is triggers a counter nuke and that will nerf the first big bang uh triggering nerfs on subsequent big bangs are almost as fickle as agility and pretty tough to do intentionally but given the speed of cecil at this point it's gonna and be tough to do he does have a silk web so that may help uh but that nuke on uh, directly onto cecil will not yeah, yeah, so he actually decides to... Oh, uh, okay, I was going to say, did he change his mind about... Oh? Oh, he does okay. have that cure free, so that, that could bring him back into it. And he does still have that elixir, so that's what Edward is going to do after the first, uh, or the second Big Bang, more likely. He's going to come out and uh, start doing the... Uh, and use that one elixir. Yeah. And the, the damage threshold to get that face switch, I believe, is 41k. So that's, that's the first target. That would get him to, quote-unquote, skip a Big Bang. We did see, that because that one was nerfed, that Palum and Rydia did survive. So yeah. and I, so bringing bad. in some sub, uh, supplementary attacks with Rydia, uh, with that, that heroin robe and uh, dragon whip. It's, yeah, I, I, I don't want to say he's got this, because that's unlikely the case, but it's looking better. So he is going to try, he is going to try to, uh, nerf this Big Bang as well. He has, uh, Edward on standby. I think he got a little bit lucky there, because if that had been on Cecil, that were, uh, that could have been it. All right, so there's the Big Bang. That should take out uh, poor Rydia. But Edward's back. We should get a phase switch. And now the question becomes, is he going to be able to do enough damage to go from that phase switch to the rocks? Uh, another question would be, can he pull off a curative item and hide? Because he's doing Black Hole immediately after this Big Bang, Looks like he's going to do that. Choco, on the other hand, is going to the Z fight, and we might actually get to see the drain strats, but he will have two nukes ready to go. But none of them will be our first place finisher, or our second place finisher, because we have to them already. Swimmy Leone has finished first in a time of 1 hour, 20 minutes, and 16 seconds, and error has finished in second place with one hour, 22 minutes, and 13 seconds. GG to both of them. I do remember Error having, a, if I remember correctly, had a really good time this morning as well. So goes from excellent time to qualified. So congratulations to both of them. We will see them at the final table, but it ain't over by a long shot. We are still taking uh, the highest Z fights of the remaining uh, scores, so how these guys do in this fight absolutely matters. Indeed, yes. And with them being so close, both of them could actually matter fairly well <laughs> in terms of final scorings. So let's see. it looks like we did get the phase switch on Supremacy side. Oh, are we on rocks? Oh, never mind. 
Oh, the tension is there. There's rocks. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> now, as long as uh, Cecil dodges those celestial bodies flying through space, he should be just fine. It looks like. Well, with those two, six thousand damage. There's the flash, and there's the finish. Well, congratulations to Supremacy finishing with an official SRL time of one hour, twenty-three minutes, and twenty seconds. Good for third place, and well done. That that Z fight. Oh my goodness. That I cannot even fathom pulling that off. That is yeah. such excellent work. And Chekosaw is having a lot of an easier time with those reflected nukes by Rydia, and of course the Crystal Sword Cecil. Uh, and hopefully we're going to get uh, Supremacy in very soon and to have an interview and talk about how that was uh, that was for him. Let's see. Do if we get a do we get a face switch already on Choco's side? We did see Invenerable is deciding to go back and pick up Adamant number two, uh, so that that'll help him out quite a bit. Um, it sometimes having that adamant is the difference between taking on a full big bang and it looks like we are joined by supremacy congratulations gg well done on the third place finish uh so how did you how'd you feel how about that seed <laughs> yeah i i wish i hadn't been a little bit overzealous thinking that that uh level 45 or 46 cecil could have powered through it with uh with edward back up but glad, uh... it gave us it gave us a Quite a bit of a chuckle oh, when Zeromus just decided to cave your face in with those two big bangs, really. <laughs> hey, uh, definitely the chat has enjoyed your attempt at least. <laughs> yeah, well, so I probably should have thought about it a bit more, but my thinking was hey, I got three elixirs, Cecil's a powerhouse, all I have to do is pop out for big bangs. Yeah, that. That doesn't work when Edward can't keep up on her health of the gym. Yeah. Um, it was, though, a fairly jet seed, wasn't it? Uh, for this type of flag set? Yeah, I mean, starting with the crystal always kind of gives you that uh, sense of dread from just the start of the seed that, you know, any kind of mistake that you make, someone else probably isn't going to make. Uh, like... But, you know, I was kind of a little bit concerned about burning my Moon Veil so early on that D-Mist, but that, that worked out, so it just led to, to getting everything pretty quickly. Yeah. What would you say was the hardest part for you on the seed, though? Um, keeping everyone alive while trying to level up and get experience. My initial thought was, this party's definitely good enough, I can get enough levels once I got 10 key items, but it was just not not very easy to keep them alive, and with no life potions and no source of being able to resurrect anyone, just getting, you know, just trying to keep people alive for experience was so difficult. That's kind of why I was just like, at some point I figured, uh, okay, I have to, I have to just go with the, the use elixirs on Cecil strategy while, uh, while Edward hides. Fair enough. So was that going to be the plan uh, from the start? Uh, just have Cecil tank through, you know, deal all the damage and have Edward hide and come back and just dodge the big things? Yep, that was as soon as... Like, I killed a few bosses and then a few trap chests and just... Power Minrivia were not staying alive to even get experience because originally my plan going up to the moon um, was okay. I'll grind them. I'll grind at least Palum to nuke. I've got some moon veils left, I think, uh, so I can just pop one. Start, you know, reflect nukes and you know, berserk Cecil with Avenger and go th through it from there. But just was not at all able to keep them alive for to get enough experience to get them up to to good spell range. Edward, uh, Edward gets a lot of slack for, uh, granted he, he brings it along himself quite a bit, yeah, but in this situation he was definitely key for you to survive that fight, wasn't he? Yeah, I can. As after I got the drain sword I considered, hey, I could just do drain strats, like, just go in, swap to Avenger, go take a nap, wake up, hope he's dead, but 
thought. Just having the Crystal Sword would make the fight so much faster that I don't know. Maybe I might have been able to actually do it with the Drain Sword at level 46 and just sat back and, and watched Cecil heal up through it, but um, ultimately no I thought that, that going with the Crystal Sword would be a, a bit more, a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well, uh, we do have Chokasura did manage to pull off the fourth place finish with a time of 1 hour, 24 minutes, and 14 seconds. Uh, Supremacy, any last words before we try to pull Chokasura in here as well? Uh, happy birthday, Scala Kitty. <laughs> right, have a great evening, everyone. Yep, GG. Right. See you again Thank soon. Thank you very much. All right, so we do see Inven uh, tackling the the Z fight right now. And we looks like we are joined by Chokasur, finishing in fourth place. Congratulations, GG. Uh, how do you feel about how that seed treated you? Oh man, <laughs> as soon as I figured out that I wasn't going to have any healing, I knew I was in for a good time. <laughs> so what yeah. was going to be uh, going through that scene knowing that you have no real source of healing? Uh, the Z fight probably hanging on your head <laughs> during the course of the entire scene. Uh, what was your plan of attack as you were going through it? Well, basically, well, since I had no healing, I was just gonna grind Vidya and Palum to get nuke. I had a couple of moon veils, so I figured I'll try to flex strats. And also, since I had that crystal sword, I was gonna just count. I was just gonna count damage, get a couple of hits in with the crystal sword, and then just reflect nukes and see what happens. Nice. Well, were there any uh, particular? Uh, boss spots that you were looking at that you thought, well, maybe I, maybe I should have uh, tried to take this boss on a little quicker, or did you feel comfortable with pretty much everything the game threw at you up until the Z fight? Yeah, I was pretty comfortable with everything. Um, I know I was considering doing the Gorbez fight, but then I realized I have only a couple of. Uh, moon veils and star veils, so I better not waste them on gold bears. So that's why I backed out of that one. And I was actually considering going to the giant just for the XP, but just uh, lucky it was just enough XP to get rid of the nuke on the moon, so I didn't have to leave, which was pretty good. Yeah, you did get 10 key items uh, at a really good, you were getting key items at a really good clip, and finding yeah. that 10th. Tenth on the first boss you had was super useful. Um, the well, Legend Sword. I, this is a pretty good time. I would say you've got a pretty good shot. Um, will we be seeing you in the further qualifiers? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I definitely want to try to, you know, get in to the final table for Catalytes. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And getting those those first two spots is always preferable to sitting on the sidelines and thinking, am I in, am I out? Right. Yeah. I'm thinking if I didn't have to grind video to nuke, and if I had some sort of healing, if I didn't have Edward, if I had yeah. anything but Edward. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that was probably... Edward. That was probably the difference. Uh, Supremacy, uh, who uh, finished in third, actually did not grind to nuke. He relied on Hydeward pulling it off, hiding in between big bangs, and the few elixirs that you guys had picked up in tier threes was enough to get him all the way through it. Ah, I see. I was considering doing that, but... Yeah, I didn't have anything for Edward, and I figured he wasn't going to be useful during my grind anyway, so I just yeah. left him dead. So. <laughs> I was also considering doing uh, Drain Sword Strats, but I figured, nah, that's not the best. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that a little bit on stream, because we figured that was an option there, but man, sitting through that entire fight and all 35,000 Big Bangs for like, yeah. oh, oh. That, that would have taken an eternity. After the first qualifier, I decided to pick up the drain store just in case. But nice. Thank goodness if, I didn't need to do that. 
in terms of agility, a anchoring is not a bad thing to have to start out off with, uh, the fight off, off with, but you really don't want to continue to rely on it in that fight. Right, I did use it to anchor. I dropped my agility from, I think, 35 to 30. And then I encrypted my crystal sword, so... I figured that was the best I could do. I didn't have anything else to lower it further. At least I don't think I did. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have Night Dew coming into the Z fight right now with Inven uh, checking to see if he can find something. Probably looking for an Asura uh, <laughs> in the waterway. Um, any last words before we go ahead and uh, go on to Night Dew Z fight? Uh, speaking of Asura, I was definitely looking for one. <laughs> yeah, that, we were we were talking about that. Poor Jack made the point of, do you? Like, even if you think you're at a point where the grind is done, do you hit up a few uh, treasure locations just hoping to find that human? Nah, at, by that point I wouldn't have even bothered. I would have just, you know, hail married it and, you know, right. kill and kill. <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, congratulations. I don't think you've had a bad time yet in any of these events. You've been absolutely fantastic. So. Uh, thank you, thank well you. Well done. Appreciate you putting on a good show for us, and thank you very much. All right. Take care. TJ, see you TJ. So, well, that was going on. Night Dew has been continuing on with his Z fight. Um, looks like he's been having a good time in there. And speaking of that, there's the flash. Uh, uh, having Cecil see it, it both... Uh, doing some physical damage as well as two ref people doing reflected nukes looks like it's been the case for and finishes up very quickly yeah having that fifth character definitely helped out quite a bit we did have a couple of finishes in the meantime uh Zyrak finishing in fifth with a score of at the time of one hour 30 minutes 52 seconds silver fire in sixth at one hour 32 minutes and 32 seconds and then Night Dew finishing in 7th with a score of 1 hour, 34 minutes, and 39 seconds. So, GG to all of those, and hopefully we're going to have Night Dew coming in and probably explain and why it was so much better for him having that 5th character. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's... I, did we see Inven decide to pick up the 5th character? No, he did not. He hasn't yet, okay, no. so he is, And he has the same ruby. So he is deciding on purpose to, he is, he's looking, he's doing all that looting. He looks like he wants that Asura real bad. <laughs> I don't blame him at all. I, uh, it, it, it's, I think it, he's, he's seen the dot duns and he's just going, well, I have nothing to lose at this point. <laughs> yeah, and, that's, that's fair. And I do believe Night Do has joined us. GG on your seventh place finish. Um, that was a seed, wasn't it? <laughs> that was definitely a seed. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, no healer. What was your first thinking when you saw that? Um, most of my time in Moon, except for like the pat, the part where I like, as I'm as I'm nearing like forty, mid forties, I'm kind of starting to alter my strategy. I'm like, okay. I'm not going to find an Asura at this point. Um, it has to be a fast reflex strat. That's that's the only thing that's going to work at this point. Fair enough. And we saw that you went down and after you got the Sand Ruby and got that, not Sid. Uh, was that just so you could uh, clog the queue a bit more with Berserk and just do a bit more damage in that? Because you knew you had to basically outrun the damage that the Romus was putting out. I'd love to say that was my strategy. Uh, however, I had not scouted Kaipo or the Sand Ruby bed, so I had no idea Sid was my fifth. At that point, I still had that little bit of hope for, you know, a Rose up or Amafu. Dare I say Tella? No, 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 no I dare not say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already had Edward. Why not put a Tella on there as well? At, at least he could have done some healing. And it, it was a, it was a possibility. <laughs> it, it definitely was, yes. <laughs> Fair. Going, for, uh, going forward, do you feel that you've learned anything from this for the, uh, for the rest of the races, if you're joining any of them? Or anything going forward? Uh, 
I mean, honestly, I mean, when you're playing this game, a lot of times you're learning off of every seed, like the last one, exactly how fast I can, you know, how far I can push Quad Zerker. Uh, not enough last time, uh, but um, just to adapt a little bit more on the fly, I kind of wish I had possibly, you know, scouted that Kaipo, saw that Sid. I may have not gone down because he really wasn't crucial to my plans. Um, really, it was just, I was, yeah, he, he really wasn't. It was kind of a bust when I saw him. Yeah, yeah, you were actually the only one of our four featured runners to make the trip to Kaipo. And that was even after some of them had seen that it was Sid, so they were probably thinking the same thing. Oh yeah, I, I can totally uh, figure that. So yeah, I, I think had any of them seen him, then yeah, it really wasn't going to be a thing. So, do you have any last thing, uh, feelings about this? It's before we uh, let you go and uh, probably have a little break. Um, I hope we have a nicer set of seeds tomorrow. I mean, um, with all the poor on naysayers out there right now, um, I'd kill for one right now. <laughs> we have we have had a couple of uh, rude ones today, hey, so yeah, it would be nice to have something decent or something a little more doable. Maybe a white mage. A white mage. <laughs> maybe, just maybe. <laughs> Heck, even having one of the two characters that you usually can't see a, a turn, uh, turn up, at least the ones that are gated, so Foo or Edge. We haven't seen those yet either. Nope, not at all. Um, likely I'll see everybody tomorrow, and uh, we'll take another uh, shot or two at this, depending on what happens. Yeah, no worries. Ha uh, GG to you, and have a good evening. You yeah, too. GG. Thank you very much. So we did get the mythical drain spear. <laughs> and unfortunately, it was the reward for the warrior's chest. Um... Uh, so, uh, Inved looks like is squeaking all the treasure chests he can find, checking the Chocobo Forest. I wonder if he were even going to see a trip into good old Cave Magnus. Uh, as he heads into the armor shot. Yep, he's going to check those chests there. He... We, we've all seen in, in Inven and go through seeds, and... Um, if you've seen his, his, his stream fairly, a, a, quite a lot, you must be fe uh, thinking that he's feeling a, quite a bit frustrated right now. Yeah, I, I think at this point, it's like, all right, let's, maybe we didn't qualify, let's have some fun. <laughs> you know, let's, let's see if we could find that Asura, just make life a little easier for us. Um... And I uh, might have a trip and check some self cave monsters too. The question would be does he decide to give us the music? It would be appreciated. <laughs> well, at his levels, we shouldn't have too much of an issue with uh, any of these fights. Uh, especially since he's got two admin armors now, I'd imagine they are on characters not named Edward. So, <laughs> I don't yeah. think anything in here is going to do that much damage, even to the point where he could probably take these fight. Well, there's a couple magic casters, so maybe going at it with one, one HP. Why not work over? We're, we'll actually find out right now. The way he set up his agility with Rydia uh, sort of dead in the middle, uh, Palum is going. Um, Palum is likely going to be getting a turn before most most enemies. Maybe not the ghosts. It looks like. Looks like. Um, but I believe he's trying to set up his agility so Palum is quicker and able to get off those those quakes a little bit quicker as well before all this comes up. Yeah, these fights. <laughs> willing to buy a mute bell. Um, these particular silk fights, rare examples of the mute bell coming in super handy if you had one. Uh, but it looks like we're getting some levels on Palum too. 
but I still think we're just looking for the Magicka Soda. I want to do some healing. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Just want to make sure even one damage is enough to finish it. Well, Rune Ring is, is pretty nice, but I think he's already got a couple. Yeah, he, he's not looking for anything equipment wise. He's, I'm pretty sure Ooh, he, he's. Curse Ring? Does he keep that? Uh, no, never mind. What am I thinking? You're not going to Curse Ring special. <laughs> Not at this stage. Uh, drain, uh, drain sword, or yes, cursed ring. I don't see yeah, happening no, because that would exactly. that would reduce the damage that he would be doing, and you can't change anything about that. Yeah, Cecil's too important to this fight to throw a cursed ring. Yeah. Uh, I'm, well, I'm... Edward's uh, auto hide is actually getting him some experience in this case, which is also uh, which is probably the, for the best because. He, he, he's likely going, uh, eventually probably going to be doing the same strategy as Supremacy, hiding him, bringing him out, out for emergency elixir in. Yeah, basically, the, the faster he is, the more the more turns he might get. Oh, the Toad Lady. Um, and in that case, you know, whether or not Edward can actually pull off two turns in between big bangs can determine the viability of that particular strat if you're not yeah. careful. Luckily, a Edward does get a whole lot of agility in his level ups. Uh, yeah, he is, he is, I believe, the third fastest character in the game behind Edge and Kane. I actually believe he's the fastest character. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, uh, at least in, in terms of pure agility. A, a, uh, Edge has a lot of, of stat uh, boosting equipment for agility, and Kane. Um, I don't think it's really too fast. Uh, well, he did get just get a 10 more bonus agility because he picked up an Artemis bow and Edward can equip that so yeah. that'll help that will definitely help yes alright so ghosts are busy being spooky with fire too one quite should do the job there we go come on Asura please Uh, well, I mean, any HP it, is good at three. Ancient sword, not so much. <laughs> I haven't actually seen an ancient sword in quite a bit of time. We, we're we're so used to playing with the seed, where the uh, the lower level items are converted to money, so you don't see things like. Uh, prisoner robes and cloths and ancient sword which is ancient for a reason it's got no attack power it's like the lowest sword in the game i think uh so ooh. it it can put a curse state on on the enemy ah there you go that's good for something question mark <laughs> you know i always think you can answer this for me when what does curse actually do because there's a, there's a couple bosses that will use it, but it's pretty rare. I think Milanza uses it, if I remember correctly. I'm and... not too I'm not too certain in terms of Final Fantasy IV, but generally curse uh, in the uh, it, it decreases is is both the damage you deal uh, it decreases the damage you deal by half and increases the damage you take by I, I uh, think, supremacy uh, is uh, uh, times out. times but reduces all stats by 15 which is sort of comparable i would say from okay so it's it's kind of, I, I guess that would make sense when going along with the cursed ring uh, uh, yeah okay. <laughs> i wonder if there's there some kind of weird strat that would involve hitting your own teammate with a curse or with an ancient sword to inflict curse to lower their agility <laughs> that wouldn't be the case. Um, one, because Curse does not persist out of battle. And agility is set at the beginning of a fight. And that is the other part, yes. <laughs> yeah. If, if only that would work with the Power Staff. Well, well, he's got... looks... this might be the end of Surf Cave for Inman if he's taking out the, uh, the Yang fight. Centipedes have... Well, there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and really, 
a kamikaze does not help. No. Artemis arrow is not terrible, but they're not really going to help us out in this for, for this particular situation that we're in. So self cave down. Uh, I, we might see a true. Do we see a true? No, he's heading back to the moon. All right. He might say that's enough. I was wondering if he was actually going to take a trip to Cave Magnus. Well, he's tapping up, so he's doing something. Because he did check Waterway. No, uh, is he going to go to the tower? Or the, the giant? Oh, he's off to the giant. Okay. Now there is a benefit, one, one nice benefit here, is that given his party, which is relatively high level, he's, and he's got, well he doesn't just have 10 key items, he's got 16 of them, uh, he's gonna get a truckload of experience from these bosses. Yeah. And there are a number of chests here, so he could find that fable to sort of summon that it seeming to elude him. Yeah, that, I mean, we did see, I think there was one of the featured runners from the morning race actually found a crystal sword by making this trip from Last Arm. Yeah. So, but, hidden value from Last Arm? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, a, a, we are going to be raiding Inventable now. Is that unfortunately or fortunately? Um, because we have had, <laughs> had, had three A runners. Uh, Invenable looks like he's going to be doing the giant, so I would suggest sticking in with him and uh, cheering him on to get uh, this seed finished. And uh, if you're w wanting to have a go at this yourself, if you, you've just been in introduced today, um, there are a lot of flags easier than this. Um, you can yes. and find information at, uh, at the website at, at www.ff4fe.com and we have a Discord which is also linked on that particular site and feel free to join us. There's a bunch of people who are more than willing to help you get into this and lots of resources available for you to get in as well. Uh, come and join us. We're a bunch of happy people, always willing to help, always willing to race. So enjoy it and have a good evening. Right, thanks guys, appreciate it. <laughs>